Dance Moms. Today we are talking to people whose influence has made an impression on culture. My next guest, four-time Emmy Award-winning actor Tony Shalhoub, <laughs> created one of the most memorable police detectives on TV, the brilliant and lovable Adrian Monk, named on Bravo's list of top 100 greatest TV characters of all time. <laughs> But he's also made an impact with another character over the past five seasons of the world. And I have fallen in love with Abe Weissman on the critically acclaimed award-winning comedy series, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Take a look. Why didn't you ever mention Ethan's aptitude test? His what? His aptitude test. They give every child in his school an aptitude test at the beginning of the year. Oh, how'd he do? He failed. They say he has the potential for nothing but happiness. Is that bad? Ethan is a firstborn Weissman male. Firstborn Weissman male is expected to excel. They are not expected to be happy. I'm sorry, just because he's happy doesn't mean he won't excel. Of course it does. Not one person who's ever accomplished anything of worth in life has ever been happy. <laughs> Please welcome to the show, Amy and Tony award-winning actor, Tony Shalhoub. You have some enthusiastic folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we call them the Tam Fam. So welcome to the Tam Fam. This is the Tam Fam. Thank you. <laughs> um, congratulations, the final season. Oh. That's how I feel. Yeah. I, I mean, the Weissmans, Abe, the cast, you got me through my pregnancy. That's when I fell in love oh, with the you. show. And Abe, this season, is at his best. Well, and by you. his best, he keeps messing up. And it's <laughs> at his worst. At his worst. Yes, his worst um, best. This guy, how do you describe him? Because he seems so relatable and he's evolving with each season. Yeah, that's what's so interesting about uh, this team of writers that we have. You know, they, uh, they have, they've been developing all of these characters, so not just the, the main two characters, but all of the characters uh, have a kind of an arc. And Abe has gone through so many changes. You know, he started out as a kind of a, in a stable position and conventional life as a math professor at Columbia. And by season two, season three, that was starting to unravel. And then he was kind of adrift for a while. Then he got a job at the Village Voice, uh, being a theater critic. And it's, it's just interesting, not only his work life, but his, his just his general outlook, uh, how he regards himself, how he regards his you know, long marriage, how he regards his children, right. especially. his family. Especially I mean, the women in his life. Well, that's funny because there, I don't want to give too much away because obviously I'm, all, I'm caught up on every single episode, but oh, there wow. is a, uh, a moment at Mineta Tavern, mm. the iconic Mineta Tavern here. You're nodding, you know the moment, um, that I think every couple in the world can relate to when the husband believes he's right about something and the wife believes she's right about something, and at the end of the night, there is a reckoning of who was actually right. I think our writers were reading my journal. <laughs> my journal. And that's, that's how that scene came about. Yeah. That's a story of my life. Uh, and well, that's what I kind of love about Abe. Abel sort of, he thinks he's uh, very confident. He thinks he knows everything. Yeah. He, thinks he's, <laughs> he thinks he's kind of figured out how the world operates and what his position is in that universe and and <laughs> every episode we find out he just knows nothing he knows <laughs> less and less and and everything is just kind of slipping through his hands and I don't know it's, it's endearing to it me it is endearing that the entire cast obviously the chemistry is incredible you have had all of these accolades did you know was there a sixth sense like we're on the something because episode one I was in I was in and I'm sad to see it come to an end. You and me both. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I had a sense. I mean, I love the writing. I love the characters. I love the relationships. 
And I love this time period. I feel like I fit well into this time period, late 1950s, early 1960s. And was, I was a kid uh, during this time. And so it's very relatable. That kid? Oh, there, hmm. Um, Look at that, you. That one. On you the, think we didn't know that was you? <laughs> you can see, even then, you can see even then I was camera shy. Um, it's embarrassing. This must have been like an Easter Sunday or something where we, we all got, but we all had those dress up outfits. And... It's interesting. I look at that picture and it reminds me of uh, the Tony acceptance speech 2018. Um, that you won for the uh, band's visit, you thank your dad and you said, may we, their descendants, never lose sight of what they taught us. That right. was just so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I owe so much to, uh, to well, both my parents mm -hmm. and my grandparents and my aunts and uncles and all of, all of those people who were immigrants and yeah. from and Lebanon, from Lebanon, yeah. yeah. And um, my dad was was born there, and um, came when he was a boy. So, but but all of the the kind of the resilience that they demonstrated and and the kind of resourcefulness, yeah, and the work ethic, of course, and uh, they they really they had to overcome a lot of a lot of hardships and. Uh, you know, just coming over on the boat, for one, th through Ellis Island and all that. And here in your speech was the reminder, yeah. really, of carrying on their hard work, but through your own journey. And right. may you remember what they put into getting you where you are. Exactly. And, I, and it, it, it occurred to me as there I, we were at Radio City for the Tony Awards, think, and I'm thinking, well, only a few miles from here is Ellis Island where they disembarked, and wow, uh, uh, you know, almost 100 years, and... This is what all of their strife and work and strength, um, you know, could result in. And it's a beautiful Wow. Thing. It's beautiful, beautiful. Coming up, Tony is also, of course, famous for another unforgettable TV character. Adrian Monk will get the latest on that after the break. Tony Shalhoub has made memorable impact, of course, with all of his roles. Let's just dive right on into Monk. Okay. I mean, the series won eight Emmys. People still falling in love with it. Now, 14 years after the show, said goodbye. Tony and the rest of the cast are together again in a highly anticipated new Peacock movie, Mr. Monk's Last Case. Yeah. Again, like Abe and, and the success of Maisel, did you have a feeling, did you know that this guy would be unforgettable? No, no, no. I, I really did not. I, I mean, uh, it's one of those things where you, you read some material, there are certain things about the material that you key into, yeah. but you don't know um, how relatable it's going to be to other people, and you don't know how, if they're going to embrace it or not. And we just had a great, a great... <laughs> I mean, it's not just embrace, it's a, it's a phenomenon. It's a, I mean, he's gone down as one of the most memorable characters of all time. Wow. And now you're reprising the role. We're doing a, a, a movie for, yeah, for Peacock. Uh, yeah. It's like a 90 minute. Uh, but what uh, frightens me already, here's the monk in me, I'm already worried because it says the last case. So then I'm like, does that really mean the last last? Or is it kind of the last? Or is it last for the... I mean, so now I'm all in my monk head right now. Well, if it makes you feel better, 14 years ago when we wrapped our eighth and final season, yeah. in 09 this was, uh, you know, we really thought we were putting it to bed. Okay. And uh, then, then the pandemic came. Right. And, and we thought, well, maybe, maybe it's time to revive this... Uh, as the pilot. Uh, maybe it's time to... Um, to, to, to revisit this character now that the, the entire world has gone through and experienced what Monk has always that's been. That's a great point, right? No, that's true, right. So it's, the, you know, because Monk traditionally has always been a kind of, a, a kind of an outlier right. and sort of a weirdo, but then, then COVID came and now we're all... In that bubble, in that all bubble. Adrian Monk, yeah. It is such an honor to have you on. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
It never gets old. Tony Shalhoub, you can watch the fifth and they say final season of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel streaming now on Prime Video.